Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Art Awakening. This is Ona, and today I want to just talk about resurrection. And I'm recording this on um, Easter Sunday, where most of the Western world is, is celebrating Easter today. And But I just recently learned that yesterday, April 16th in 2022, was uh, Hanuman Jayante, which is the a celebration of the birth of Lord Hanuman, the, the monkey god. And I just thought, I looked up Hanuman because I didn't know much about him. And I saw quite a few parallels between Hanuman and Jesus. So I, I, I thought it was just really interesting. And then this whole thing about resurrection started coming forward. So I just wanted to share this with you. Um, so if you're not familiar with Hanuman, and forgive me if I'm not quite accurate, I am just relaying what, what I uh, found online. Um, and I know that there are many stories in, of Hanuman, they don't all mesh. So um, this is what I learned. Hanuman was a devotee of Rama, who is the incarnation of Vishnu, the preserver of divine order and natural law. Okay, so Hanuman loved Rama so much that he devoted um, pretty much his entire life to him. Um, Hanuman came into being by more or less an immaculate conception by means of the wind god. Um, and his mother, Anjana, had been cursed to take the form of one of the monkey people. And she had been praying uh, for a son or a child. And the life force basically came to her through the wind god to drop this in. So the wind god is symbolic of the breath or the life force itself, right? Um, so that's one thing that they have in common is this immaculate conception. And then the other thing is the resurrection. Okay, so most of us, I think, are pretty familiar with um, the, the Jesus Christ story of resurrection. But Hanuman um, had a resurrection when he was a child. He reached for the sun, thinking it was the fruit. And uh, there are various forms of that story, but ultimately it causes him to die. And then he's resurrected. He's brought back to life um, by the gods. And so there there are these parallels and I think it's interesting that both of them, um, this resurrection in, in, in the case of Jesus Christ or you know, the birth of Hanuman, who is this character who is resurrected. These are both celebrated in the springtime in the Northern hemisphere, which is of course the season of resurrection, right? Um, but there's another thing that I think is really common between the two of them. And, and that's this factor of, of wildness. Um, there's a connection to wildness with both of them. And with Jesus Christ, of course, we have, you now he did go into the wilderness and spent some time there. And that's where he went through this purification process. Um, but also he received the baptism through John the Baptist, who was a really, really interesting character. Now, John the Baptist is known for having, you know, basically lived in the wilderness and is uh, said to have lived on locusts and wild honey. And as a child, I was thought that was interesting, right? You know, who <laughs> lives on locusts, but it didn't really strike me how significant that was until my best friend, who is an Orthodox Jew, told me at some point that um, the insects were very, very like the height of unkosher. See, she said eating insects is worse than eating pork. And so the next time I thought about John the Baptist, I was like, wow, um, he's out there eating locusts and wild honey. And, and so that really puts him in a very, very unique class, right? He's this holy man, but he's eating you know, this, this height of unkosher food. So it's like this, he, he is this wild man, right? He's this uncivilized force in, in, in human form. And he's the one that Jesus chooses to, um, you know, through whom to, to receive the, the baptism. Um, okay, and then with Hanuman, being the the monkey god, right? He he is that is symbolic of 
kind of the wild man, the right, the man who has not gone through the civilization process, and um, you know is still very much, um, you know, still very much tied to nature. Okay, and so what is wild nature, right? It, wild, wild nature um, is this this kind of raw existence, right? And it's, you know, nature, oh, resurrection. I mean, let's look, look at resurrection is the moving of the life force so powerfully as to reverse the death life polarity, right? From death towards life. That's what resurrection is, okay? Death and life really are the same. Okay, it's just a it's 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 a polarity. They're two ends of the same thing, right? So we move in our lifetimes from death through life and, and back again. Um, but with a resurrection, we are actually reversing that direction of the life force and moving it back towards life. And this is found nowhere more strongly than in the wilderness, right? Well, wild nature has destructive forces, but any destruction in nature is always followed by a superabundance of life springing back, right? Springing forth to fill any void that was caused by the destructive forces. And, and so that is the rhythm of nature, right? Um, that it always comes back um, with more life than it, than, than it did, um, you know, than, than was destroyed. And we can see that there have been several mass extinction events on the earth and each one came you know, life came springing back in greater abundance and greater diversity than than what it had been before. Um, so this is the force of resurrection that every human being, every living being has that force within it, right? It has the capability for that resilience, that return of life, right? Even after something has, you know, brought it down. So what I'm guided to share today is that the resurrection is not linear. When we think of the resurrection, right? Um, it's not a linear process. We think of it as linear, like here we have life and then death and then rebirth. Um, so that's a linear progression. But in actuality, what I'm given to see and to share, the, it's the resurrection exists in eternal time. Okay, it's always there. And what the resurrection is, is this, um, it's this life force, right, that is always ready to spring forward. Okay, um, so of course, we're living in temporal time space, where we do exist, you know, see things happening in linear time. So how does it work to understand resurrection as an eternal force? Um, well, how we experience that is as potential, okay? Um, so it's like an acorn or a seed. I have a package of pea seeds here, right? Um, and a seed is something where the life force has been taken down into um, something that's inert. It's almost dead, right? It's, it's an inert object, a seed. Um, but within it is this incredible life force, right? So in its dry form, it's not expressing as its full-blown potential. It's the potential within it, right? Um, but that potential, that whole living plant is there within each seed and able to spring into existence, spring back into life, right? As soon as the conditions are ripe for it. So in this time, um, in this time, this period of time in resurrection, right? That, that's being celebrated all over the world right now. Um, it's really a reminder that it's up to us to not only see that potential that exists right here, okay? We see all these things crashing down. Oh, the old order is crashing down. Um, and there are many who believe that <laughs> this is the end times, that this is maybe the end of the world, all that stuff, um, you know? but it's up to us as star seeds to see and understand that potential to hold it within us and to choose it, to choose that potential because 
when we conceptualize or you know see in our mind's eye what's happening in the world we can choose how we how we choose to perceive that right and how we choose to envision it and how we choose to see what's going on um now we can see what's going on in the world and there's all sorts of gearing up for war that's happening the potential is there for nuclear war we know this right um there could be you know then we're looking at a nuclear winter and all this stuff right um and i think it would be spiritual bypassing not to acknowledge the potential for that but is that the potential that you want to be placing in your third eye and holding on to and focusing on uh, it's not the potential i want to focus on i want to focus on the potential of this incredibly vibrant healthy eden of an earth right the earth as eden mother gaia just full blown in her glory right this is the potential that i've chosen to place in my third eye and i hope that i'm not the only one i know that i'm not the only one right um and while uh, while i understand that you know it's going to be a journey there it's i think it's very very important that we really really focus on that fully resurrected potential because the more we focus on that full potential of resurrection the realization of that the more easily it's going to go right um so it's it's really up to us to see that potential and to choose it and in so doing to create it, right? Because we are moving into a collective winter on Mother Earth, but we are the seeds. We are the star seeds, right? That's why we're here. We are the seeds. <laughs> we carry that potential within us. And we have the power of the chosen ones. And I'm not talking in any kind of elitist sense of some entity outside us bestowing upon us in this kind of special status, but because we have the power to choose, right? Um, and that is a power that's given to every single human being, right? But, um, you, you know, if you're awake enough, then you're the one that has that realization that we have that power, okay? And that's something that you can choose for yourself and that you can share, you know, with others that we do have that choice. Um, just like Hanuman, who devoted himself so fully to the preserver of life, that the image of Rama was burned onto his heart, we can choose to devote ourselves to the life force and to that which preserves or sustains it in our life. We each have a calling, right? And that is something that we're called to do or to be, right? To participate in that, that embodies the life force, that preserves the life force, right? Um, this is our positive expression of of that life force when we follow that calling when we surrender right surrender to anything that we're attached to that is holding us back um you know letting that go and surrendering to this life calling this calling that we have when, and when we choose that when we choose life so unwaveringly we become the chosen ones having chosen ourselves as the sustainers of life right and in so doing we are the resurrection and the life of humanity so big message <laughs> um and and expect big changes and um, I personally am stepping into big changes. I'm going to uh, create a video on that very, very soon. So watch for that. But in the meantime, stay in your heart, do what you love, expect miracles, and remember you were born to be free.